What's good, peeps? Thanks as always for passing by the channel. Much appreciated. Hit that subscribe button if you guys are new. All right, quick one, the Q&As. Um, I was thinking about doing the Q&As on a live stream going forward. What do you guys think? Yes, no, don't do it, indifferent, stop it, Ade. Um, I just feel like it might be a good idea. I just watched someone's q and I didn't watch all of it, but I watched part of it, and it was on a live stream, and it was all right. A lot of people were like, asking questions. It was very interactive. It was back and forth, and I think it went on for something like three and a half hours. I mean, I would never do that long, and I wouldn't expect anyone to do that long, but... I mean, a lot of people have been moaning that my Q&As have kind of dropped down to 45 minutes. I mean, if I am talking to people and if it's interactive, I can keep on going. You guys know me. I can keep on going. So I'm thinking about doing those for now on a live stream. Again, it's all up to you guys. If you guys like, yes, 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 I'll do it. If it's like, fuck, no, 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 then we'll just do it the way we're doing it, where you send in your questions and I answer them. But I do think um, it could work and it's a good idea, especially because of how many questions I get. Obviously, you guys probably see me answer like, I don't know, 60 or 70 questions, but I probably get around 100, maybe a bit more. I get emails, I get tweets, I get DMs, and obviously the ones in the comment section. So um, I would like to be able to answer everyone's question because everyone does take their time to type in. So I think Q&A live stream going forward, first one end of July, it might happen. Again, if you guys say absolutely no, then I won't do it. If you guys like it, We'll fucking do it. All right, let's talk about uh, Dillian White versus Oscar Rivas. Coming up, what, July 20th at the O2 Arena. I'm hearing ticket sales aren't going too well for this one. Um, what did I hear? What did I read the other day? Like, what's the O2 Arena capacity? 20,000. They've only done like 10,000 tickets. I don't know how true this is. I mean, they have got some ticket sellers, you would think, on the card. I mean, Dave Allen versus David Price. Both of those, are they ticket sellers? I think they are. I think Dave Allen is anyway. Um, Derek Chisora is on the card as well. Lawrence Okoli has been added to the card. Um, but yeah, it's not going very well. There is still a week and a half to go until the event. So I'm sure they can maybe push a few tickets. A lot of the fighters will probably give them away and competitions to win some tickets. So they could probably get up to maybe the 15,000 mark, but it's never, ever going to sell out. Unless Eddie Hearn pretends and says it is sold out and blacks out a couple of the seats. That isn't going to be a sellout whatsoever. Um, isn't this guy's first, could be wrong here. Isn't this their first pay-per-view show this year in Britain? Um, obviously, they've had AJ and it's been on pay-per-view, but I'm talking about a fight card in the UK. Um, if it is, this isn't great, is it? I mean, you want your first pay-per-view card to be a big one. Um, and this isn't doing too well. It doesn't mean it won't be great fights. I think there'll be some good fights on the night. But in terms of ticket sales and interest, it doesn't seem to be a lot of interest for this one. I mean, ticket sales could also be because of Obviously, a week before, at the same venue, Frank Warren's obviously got the show with Nathan Gorman versus Daniel Dubois, Joe Joyce versus Bryant Jennings. And I think a lot of people are just picking and choosing which ones they can go to, right? A lot of people can't afford to go to both. So you would look and you think, OK, which one do I want to go to as a British fight fan? And I could understand how some people, and I've not looked at their ticket sales either, but I could understand how some people might prefer to go to Dubois versus Gorman. That, that's a good fight. It's a British fight that a lot of people are interested in. Plus, you get Brian Jennings on the undercard versus Joey Joyce. Liam Williams on the undercard. Sonny Edwards is on the undercard. So I can see how people might choose that one. Again, this is British boxing killing itself. I mean, two fight promoters putting on two big shows a week apart, same venue. Shit happens. All right, let's talk Dillian White for a few minutes. Um, it's taken me a long time, a very long time, in fact, to get on the Dillian White hype train. Um... I wasn't on the train at all. In fact, I was very much off it. So much so, he blocked me on Twitter. I don't know what I said. I must have said something ridiculous a couple of years ago. So if you are watching this, Dillian White, or I hope he's watching, you never know, or anyone knows Dillian White that's watching this, please tell him to unblock me because I say a lot of good things about him now. But I, I certainly didn't think he would ever get to where he's got to now. So I have to give him credit. Um, when he got beat by AJ, um, I was very much in the mold of um, 30 seconds of fame, right? Or, or five minutes of fame, that's what they say, right? I thought that, you know, you got beat by AJ and we'll probably never see him again. I thought British level, maybe European level, certainly not world level, and certainly not where he's got now, which is um, what a top five, top six position and on the cusp of a heavyweight title fight. So, I mean, he's done very well to rebuild after that AJ loss. But even after the AJ loss, I still wasn't convinced. I mean, he fought... Um, he fought a guy called, I think, Malcolm Tan, if my memory serves me right. And then he had the fight with Dave Allen that went all the way. I think people forget that. Um, he fought the likes of Ian Lewison. 
He didn't look good in that fight. Stopped Ian Lewis in, I think, corner stoppage. Was it a doctor stoppage or something round 10? Because Ian Lewis broke his nose. Uh, I just didn't think, I wasn't too high on him. I have to be honest with you. Even after the Derek Chisora back and forth war where I thought Chisora won, I thought, you know what? British level. I thought he's okay, but British level. He, he's not going to get past that. This is a guy that just likes to have a fight, right? Which is good. It's entertaining. But in terms of fighting those top guys, you need a bit more than that. And then I, I slowly started to get on the, the Dillian White train. I was like, okay, he's not too bad. Didn't look too good against Hellenius, but that was a step up. Hellenius was a step up, and I thought he looked a bit, I don't know, looked gassy. He looked like he'd run out of energy. And then I started to follow him on Instagram and social media, and then I started to see what he was doing, I think, in Loughborough. And he was doing a lot of strength and conditioning work. He completely changed his diet. You follow him on Instagram, you'll see it. And then I thought he started to get a bit better. Had that fight against Lucas Brown, good performance, but difficult to judge because I thought Lucas Brown was done. I mean, the fact that Lucas Brown is still fighting now is a bit of a disgrace. And then he had that fight against Joseph Parker. Joseph Parker obviously coming off that loss against um, AJ, but nonetheless, Joseph Parker at the time for me, still very much top seven in the world. I think it's fair to say gave AJ some problems. Wasn't a great fight, but problems were there. I thought he'd done very, very well against Joseph Parker. Um, some people say, you know, if that fight went on for another minute, he would have lost. Fair dues, but this is boxing. It's 12 rounds. This is an old school 15 rounds. 12 rounds, doop, whatever happens in between those 12 rounds is it. And he done enough in those 12 rounds. Some people say, oh, the elbow and all that kind of stuff. I get that, but I still thought Dillian White showed me that he belonged at world level with the Joseph Parker performance. But it was the Chisora performance that got me thinking that this guy is pretty damn good. Um... I know people will say, yeah, but Chisora's lost, what has he lost? Eight or nine fights. But it was the maturity he showed in that performance. We know those two are fucking, I don't know, just they hate each other, don't they? I mean, they literally just do that every time they meet. And I actually thought the second fight was going to be a bit like the first fight. And the reason it wasn't, wasn't because of Chisora, who wanted it to be. It was because Dillian White boxed and showed a lot of maturity. He could easily have had a fire fight with Derek Chisora, but he showed, you know what? I'm just going to box. And I thought he boxed brilliantly. Every time Derek Chisora tried to rough him up, he looked stronger in the clinch. Even work against the ropes looked good. And I thought it was a great performance. And obviously he ended it with that left hook. So that's the performance that showed me, not that he's at world level, because I thought I learned that from Joseph Parker, but that he can fight to a game plan and he's now mature. Right, he isn't the guy that's a bit reckless anymore. And I think that's the kind of performance that's going to stand him in good stead when he does fight the top five, right? So the, the Furies, the Wilders, the Joshua rematch, Andrew Ruiz, and, and maybe Ortiz. All those guys, maybe not Ruiz, but I would favour all those guys to beat him. But I think he causes all those guys a lot of problems. And and I, I do think we forget, Dylan White didn't have an extensive amateur background. Remember, he's from a kickboxing background. Yes, he had a few amateur fights, but nothing spectacular. So he's almost having to learn on the game. And I'm watching him now, and I think this is a guy that's learned a lot. And now he just looks like a better boxer, not a brawler. Before he was definitely a brawler. Now he looks like a boxer. In saying all that, I think Oscar Rivas is a tough fight for Dillian White. I'm not going to get into all the tactical stuff. I don't really do that on this channel. I'm not very good at doing that. Um, but sometimes it just comes down to boxer A being better than boxer B. And I just think that Dillian White is better than Oscar Rivas. I think Oscar Rivas is good. He's unbeaten. I think he's a top 15 guy. I don't think he is where... Dylan White put him on his list. I think Dylan White had him at eight. I don't think he's that high. He's a solid guy. Um, and I do think that Dylan White might have to go a bit old school Dylan White to get a bit of respect from this guy because I think this guy is fresh and will keep coming, all right? Um, so it's going to be a tough fight. But I think this new version of Dylan White, who can brawl when you need to brawl, but can also use a bit of brain and box on the back foot, I think is enough to beat Oscar Rivas. And right now... I do think the guys I mentioned, so Joshua, Wilder, Fury, Ortiz, are the only guys out there that I can confidently say I think can beat him. Anyone else? Not super confident. Let's include him, Ruiz or Povetkin or Pulev. I, I like Dillian White. Again, it's taken me a few years to get on the hype train. Um, I'm not fully on it yet. I, I want to see how he performs against Rivas. But I do think we have um, a solid world level operator but what do you guys think about white Rivas? Uh, i am excited i think white very late stoppage maybe similar to chisora what was that 10 11 or um white winning it quite wide maybe eight to four 